All right, what's up, everybody? We are on episode 12 of Made in Abyss. And slowly but surely, there's definitely some puzzle pieces coming together here, right? I mean, what was that whole scene about at the end of last episode with um, Reg basically going outside, noticing these eternal flowers or something, I think they call them, right? Which was supposed to be at uh, Liza's fake grave as well. He noticed them and he got brought back basically to that location, at least in his visions, right? And he could actually hear himself talking there for a moment too. I think, like, I rewatched the episode and he specifically mentioned, I'll be going now, Liza. Whereas he himself even brought up that, like, he remembers basically mourning her or something like that, right? So more and more, when you think about it like that, what it seems to allude to is that it was Reg who basically set out on this quest to go up, probably, the Abyss, right? Where he was eventually also found. He might have actually... Yeah, I mean, that's a weird part. Did he bury Liza there? But was Liza maybe removed from her grave? That's, I guess, something to consider. Does he think that he buried Liza there? At least when he could still think, you know, because he doesn't have any memories anymore now whatsoever, of course. But, like, did he think that he buried her there? Or, or, or what exactly happened? But it seems like he basically marked that spot, perhaps. And it was him who might have left the letter there. Of course, the letter was in a different handwriting. It could have been his own doing. It could have been something he himself actually ended up writing, right? Drawing himself on it as well. But then again, the letter said, I'll be waiting, right? Like it's some kind of open invitation, basically, for Rico to come and find Liza. It's all so weird. I don't... I can't say I understand it, of course. And again, it's puzzle pieces that are coming together, but there's still plenty lacking, so don't get me wrong. Um, still, it's very interesting to basically come to the conclusion that, like, Reg is definitely involved here in some kind of way. And the question simply remains, what? Yeah, uh, apart from that, not a whole lot of progress necessarily made in the last episode. Of course, it was mainly about helping Rico recover, which she is now finally... Um, yeah, I mean, she's going to come to now, right? And uh, of course, yeah, Nanachi talked a little bit about what happened to her, as well as to Midi, <laughs> her friend, who unfortunately has lost all, basically, human form. Whereas, uh, 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 yeah, like Nanachi herself is doing surprisingly okay still, right? Even though, yeah, I, I guess the whole bunny appearance that she has now was actually caused by the curse too. But that's, yeah, this was all caused by the curse on the sixth layer, apparently, right? So you really want to make sure to avoid ever having to ascend there because you're going to be either losing your humanity or life itself. And so, you know, it just goes to show you how woefully unprepared Rico and Reg really were. Um, also, when it came to basically Nanachi putting Reg in his place, <laughs> saying like, why didn't you just cut off like the, uh, you know, the arm at the at the elbow or whatever, right? Because you could have easily done so there. It's two separate bones, obviously. <laughs> All these small little touches. Yeah, it's fantastic, I will say. But I mean, again, like that's basically the entire point that last episode tried to make is like these two really weren't ready for anything coming their way. And um we knew that, technically, but at the same time, yeah, they didn't care anyway, right? And so, uh, as the audience, I was simply, you know, forced to watch, I guess. But, yeah, guys, we're going to see where the rest of this uh, story is going to be going. So, we're going to be diving into episode 12. And, of course, if you enjoy my reactions to Mate and Abyss, then guess what? You can also get early access to the next 12 episodes already straight away over on my Patreon page, which is going to be linked on top of the description over there. We should be very close to probably finishing the show at this point. Because I'm going to be checking out the movie, of course, in between. Apparently, that's all kind of, um, you know, canon and uh, supposed to basically be in between the storyline. So, like, you can't actually continue with season two without having seen the movie. Uh, it's basically a, uh, a required watch, I guess is what I mean to say. So, yeah, I'll be checking out that. Um, uh, and then, yeah, probably by now we're going to be a couple episodes away from actually finishing the second season right there. So, go and check all that out. Full-length reactions, of course, if you want to see me react to the episodes in their entirety. But with that being said, let's dive into this new episode of Made in Abyss. Oh. The kid is doing poorly? Oh, wow. A pharmacist on the road, huh? His condition is not somehow going to be connected to Rico and Reg, right? Permanently damaged if he does survive. I have no idea what the fuck that is about, man. 
Oh, it is his birthday, dude. Oh no, he's gonna think it's the ghost. The birthday de death disease. Died on the same day of the year that they were. Yeah. What the fuck is that all about? This is so fascinating. A funeral? Over here? Eternal fortune flowers, that's what they were called. Yeah, it's a regular occurrence, apparently. Damn, man. Orphans whose birthdays were unknown. Oh, as in, you can't confirm whether it was the birthday disease because you don't know when they were actually born, huh? Oh, Kiwi's doing fine now, huh? Thank God. Oh. Still, thank God. Yeah, I have no idea. This place is so full of crazy mysteries that you can't wrap your mind around. I love the design of the ship, by the way. It's like a fish. Some kind of curse or spell. Yeah, no, probably, uh, definitely is not going to have anything to do with the abyss. Absolutely not. Something completely absurd. Yeah, no. Obviously, it's tied to that. Longing. Oh, yeah. Rico's longing to go down. Final mom. <laughs> Dude, I always love these descriptive texts. They're so... I don't know, they just get you to think, you know? Yep. It absolutely was. Seems to be, at least. The one who was mourning for Liza, yeah, but that does implicate that she did indeed die, which is weird. Why was she not found at her grave then, though? Yeah, again, he could have actually buried her. But she might have been removed from the grave, which would be bad news, because I do want her to end up being alive. What if she herself came back to life, actually, Liza? That's possible, too. <laughs> Damn, man. Yeah, I don't think little Mitty here is trying to do any damage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think Mitty appreciates her. Damn, dude. Reminding her of herself. God, all the saliva. I feel so bad for Mitty, man. Oh, injecting her? Neutralized poison? Holy shit. She's got some... She got that because of the curse now and stuff? And then use her blood for the medicine. Damn, man. Gross as fuck, but if it works, it works, huh? Yeah, give me that backstory. I mean, clearly Midi was the friend that we saw in the sort of flashback thing, right? Oh. Well, she's probably got a point. She would know. Looks delicious. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I'll, I'll happily uh, eat some of that. Thank you. <laughs> God, I feel so bad for this kid. <laughs> Sticky mud, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if I would be able to eat something like this. Something that, you know, might taste nice? Well, let's find out. Probably tastes like shit, too. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, though. This George. 
I mean, even, even if it, like, tasted nice, I wonder if I would be able to eat it if it looks like that. Kind of doubt it. <laughs> She's gonna go straight back to death. Yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah. I don't know if we even have all our great ingredients over here. That's the problem, right? Like, I guess that Reg just figured... I collected all this shit over here. It seemed pretty okay, you know? But, like, if this is... Uh, if this was made out of that, there probably isn't anything else to get, right? Like, I don't know what you're supposed to eat over here in the first place. <laughs> Piece of junk. Keeps calling him that. <laughs> Evade it? Well, don't go up. Who can't see it? Nah, you better. You've shown yourself to us. That was already a secret, so you can share this secret too. Let you experience it, whatever the fuck that is supposed to mean. Okay, some kind of invisible blanket. Is this an invisibility cloak? Harry Potter style? What are we doing? This thing can shield us from the curse? That's how that works? Like, we literally cannot get affected by it? It's kind of hard to walk like this, though. Fog weave, a grade 3 relic. That is amazing. I mean, you can still walk with this. You can't flee from monsters, though. They can still see you, right? The true nature of the curse of the abyss? What is that supposed to mean? It's floaty in the same kind of way. With layer piled upon layer, it blankets us, yeah. It warps. The curse does. Pulling it. Restricting yourself with it. I mean, even that is not like... It's not... Oh. Oh, I see. Actually breaking through. That is fascinating to think about. So, basically she's kind of saying that like Reg using his arms to go up, I think it was like 80 or 800 meters he mentioned. They basically just like shredded through the cloth that is the curse, if that makes sense, right? And that's what got Rico to be hit by it so, so much. I mean... This still doesn't really tell us if there's any way to, like, avoid it, though. Yeah, no, you, you base... I mean, it's just gonna continue following you, right? Huh. <laughs> oh, well, I guess that's true then. Farther away you get from the vertical shaft. Yeah, we definitely moved quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like some kind of outskirts, basically, place or whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I'm not sure how she means that, but positively delightful. Yeah. It's interesting how she's figured all this stuff out. She seems to be the only one. 
Stop that longing, yeah, exactly. Just like we mentioned. It's enough for them to push through. Oh, what is she about to point out about the helmet? Is this going to be about the pattern that it's showing? Or will she know anything about this that we don't? Oh. Is this going to somehow reveal the curse or... As in make it visible for us? I mean, I don't know what good that's going to do. Yeah, well, to avoid it. Somehow, but that seems kind of impossible. Uh, is Rico just having a bad dream or what the fuck is this? Damn, that is one way to uh, visualize what's going on in her mind. She seems like some kind of life form, but can't call it human. Huh? Oh, now it's like the cloth that's surrounding her, like the curse. This shit is all so... Like, it's super well done. It's super intriguing. It's hard to put into words what you're looking at. <laughs> we got a walkie-talkie. Oh, that's what she installed. Interesting. So is that some kind of relic she found as well? Or is this known for them to possess? Whistling. Yeah, no. My man is not listening. Oh god, another one. Is this human actually real though this time? Who is this? Oh! He was actually blowing on the whistle. Fascinating. I didn't think we'd be running into somebody here. But yeah, it's a real person because it's only that other creature that like fake this kind of stuff, right? Okay, so what are the instructions to take this thing down? Dispose of Orbi. Look up and completely commit to it. As in, don't face the beast? Don't face the Orb Piercer? Oh, he might respond to like looking straight at him. And want to attack you as a result. Yeah, you gotta look away. Oh, shit, man. That's a complicated or difficult thing to ask of somebody to do. Jump to the right. Oh, shit. Blindly. She didn't say grab on, though. Absolutely do not let go. The organ it uses to sense the force field. Holy shit! We gotta tame it now like a, like a bull. Uh, go for the kill. Yeah, that's not what we want though. Tie it up. I mean, can Reg actually not be affected by the poison? I guess so, right? Because it did just pierce him, I think. Oh no! Oh, she was not even prepared for this. Oh, he's using his... Oh, fuck. Wow, she's actually impressed by seeing that, huh? She's like shocked. Damn. Look at the expression on her face. She seems like devastated in a certain way or something. I don't know. She might have just realized something about Reg that she didn't know before. I don't know exactly what happened here. Hmm. 
Yeah, she does not want to reveal herself to him, obviously. But Reg is not just going to walk away from him. Relay a message to the top. Oh, to Alita. We're still continuing our adventure, letting him know that we're alive. A signal. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. I mean, that's going to be especially nice for the other kids to know about. Because they're going to... You know, they're like... I mean, they haven't really shown it, but they must be worried out of their mind too, right? <laughs> Actually, they did show us them talking about the wall, whatever, at the third layer, right? Yeah, honestly, she would be of great use. Somebody with experience. Let go of me. <laughs> Kill Midi. Damn. What a thing to ask. She probably feels sorry for Midi or something. Wants to kind of like... Put it out of its misery. But she can't do it simultaneously. Man. Oh, the guy that we saw. Oh, this is so fucked up, man. Oh, don't end things here. Come on, oh, dude. Man, yeah, we've got one episode left this season. That's going to be one hell of a, of a finale, no doubt. A devastating one. All right, guys. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and of course... You can get early access to the next 12 episodes straight away over on my Patreon page, which is going to be linked on top of the description. Go and check it out. You can also sign up as a free member and watch the next two episodes already right now. So, I'll see you there.